So I feel very excited to share with you uh, one of my favorite papers and uh, this paper which is uh, titled as the Detailed Balance Limit uh, for Efficiency of uh, PN Junction Based uh, Solar Cells. And uh, this is not just my favorite paper, it's in fact one of the uh, most highly cited paper in the field of semiconductors. This paper has been cited uh, more than uh, 2000 uh, times, so that speaks to the quality of the paper. And uh, sometimes this paper is also known as the Shockley Quasar Limit because of uh, the authors of these papers were uh, William Shockley and uh, Hans uh, Quasar who used to work for uh, William Shockley at uh, Shockley Transistor at uh, that time. And let me just read through the abstract of this paper to give you some uh, context. So this paper says that uh, th these, uh, these two guys, William Shockley and Hans Squizier, they are interested in finding the upper theoretical limit of efficiency conversion of a PN junction based uh, solar cell. And they apply this, this principle of uh, detail balance to, uh, to find this limit. And this uh, principle of uh, detail balance is uh, something which is uh, used in the field of uh, thermodynamics and so they are applying essentially a principle a thermodynamic principle to find the theoretical limit of uh, efficiency conversion for a PN junction based uh, solar cells and they say that this is uh, for an ideal case in which the only recombination mechanism is uh, of between electrons and holes is that of uh, radiative so the only recombination mechanism they are taking into account is a uh, radiative recombination and uh, then they are further go on to say that uh, the sun and the cell are assumed to be black bodies with temperature of uh, 6000 kelvin and uh, 300 kelvin so they have assumed the sun and the cell to be uh, the radiation coming from the sun and the cell to be uh, equal to that of a black body with uh, these uh, temperatures so if they do that then the maximum efficiency that they find is uh, of 30% uh, and that corresponds to an energy band gap of 1.1 uh, which is very close to what you get uh, in uh, silicon so give you to to give you some uh, context this uh, paper was uh, published in uh, 1961 and the uh, efficiencies of uh, so to the solar cell the first uh, 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 you know, uh, good solar cell which was demonstrated by Bell Labs was demonstrated in 1954 and it had efficiency of around uh, 6% and uh, more, more you know, cells uh, were, uh, which were published uh, or which were being reported uh, around that period, they still had efficiency of uh, 9 to 10%. And what this paper, this uh, audacious paper from uh, Shockley and Hans Kweiser, they were saying that uh, these cells can go up to 30% efficiency. So they had, you know, they got some slack for giving this prediction and they had to essentially explain that uh, uh, the actual junctions, they do not uh, match uh, these efficiencies. So they had to give some explanation that uh, why is this, uh, why is this wide uh, discrepancy between, uh, between the observed cell efficiency and uh, what uh, they were uh, predicting. So, I'm showing here uh, what the other people at that time were doing. So these were, this is the approach that the peers of uh, Shockley and Kweiser were taking to determine again this uh, maximum efficiencies. And the reason why there was a lot of interest in determining these uh, maximum efficiencies was uh, that these uh, solar cells were being considered for applications into space. In fact, uh, Russia had just uh, launched a satellite which used these uh, solar cells uh, uh, as the power source. So there was a there was a large amount of interest in finding out what would be the maximum efficiency that these uh, solar cells uh, can achieve. So most of the peers or most of the colleagues of uh, Shockley and Kweiser, they were approaching this uh, problem in this way. So they were essentially considering these uh, PN junction uh, based solar cells made of a certain material, let's say silicon in this case. And they were con considering all the loss mechanism that can occur in these cells. So ideally you want these, uh, these electrons and holes to be collected at these, uh, uh, at these uh, two contacts, but there might be a stray 
carrier which collect gets collected at the wrong contact so there might be a loss mechanism which is occurring at the contact similarly instead of being collected these electrons and hole pair which are generated instead of being collected at the contacts they can recombine with each other and they can emit out a photon so most people you know they were using material proper properties to calculate uh, this uh, uh, this uh, recombination mechanism but the thing where this comp gets complicated that this uh, photon which is uh, emitted can essentially get reabsorbed back in the cell and it can generate another hole and electron pair and further this can emit back a photon which can get uh, reabsorbed as well so this is you know if you approach this uh, problem from a material perspective you immediately see the fallacies of uh, that so what uh, Shockley and Coyzer did was they said you know uh, let's not uh, let's not uh, take this approach and they essentially said uh, you know we will not approach uh, this uh, uh, problem in this way and they in fact approach this uh, problem using this uh, method of uh, detailed ba balance which uh, is uh, just uh, to approach this problem from a thermodynamic uh, perspective but they did make uh, certain assumptions to uh, certain assumptions to uh, to solve uh, this uh, problem so the first assumption that they made was they assumed that uh, the concentration of uh, sunlight was uh, one sun so they uh, did not assume that you are uh, using any concentrated optics and uh, uh, they assumed that the concentration was just equal to one sun. Another assumption that they made that they, uh, which I uh, mentioned in the abstract, that they assumed that the sun in the cell, they act as ideal black bodies with the sun at a temperature of uh, 6000 Kelvin and the cell at a temperature of uh, 300 uh, Kelvin. Another assumption they made was that absorption in the cell, it uh, essentially has a step a profile of a step function. And what I mean by that is that uh, all the photons which have energy less than the band gap they don't get absorbed uh, in the cell at all and all the photons which have uh, energy greater than or equal to the band gap they have a absorption coefficient of one or you know all of these photons which have energy greater than the band gap they get completely absorbed and this absorption function is like a step function another assumption they made was uh, this uh, carriers uh, in the semiconductor they have infinite uh, mobility so if these electrons and hole pairs are generated they will essentially they have the capability to diffuse uh, till these contacts where uh, they'll be collected and uh, another assumption which I stated uh, in the abstract is that the only mechanism uh, that they assume for recombination was uh, this uh, radiative recombination and there might be other mechanism which can happen for example if you have traps in your semiconductor there's a shockley reed hall mechanism which uh, can also give you recombination but they assume that you have an ideal semiconductor and the only recombination mechanism that you can have is a radiative recombination so before we get into you know before we uh, get into the actual shockley coiser limit the paper actually presented uh, more like a fun exercise so they said what would be the limit of uh, of this solar cell if the temperature of the cell was essentially zero kelvin so before actually evaluating the problem for a realistic case where the temperature of the cell is uh, 300 kelvin which is close to the root temperature they first said uh, let's evaluate this problem for the case of of uh, temperature of the cell being uh, zero Kelvin and they uh, in that this uh, figure that I'm borrowing from the paper it uh, essentially also assumed this uh, funny looking geometry of the cell where so they assume the cell to be this uh, circular uh, in shape where I have this uh, P region on the outside and this N region on the inside and uh, they assume the solar radiation to be coming from uh, this disk so they assume the solar radiation to be coming from this disk which is at a temperature uh, equal to the temperature of the Sun and this is a very idealized case so they want to maximize the efficiency so they are assuming that the radiation is incident on all the surfaces uh, of the cell usually it's only incident on a uh, on you know one particular side of the cell which is uh, facing the sun so this is a this is a, a idealized case and they want to calculate uh, the maximum efficiency uh, that you can uh, get uh, in this case so what would be the efficiency in this case the efficiency would be the total uh, generated uh, photon energy divided by the input power so the way you can calculate the total uh, generated uh, photon energy would be to calculate the 
number of uh, photons are absorbed and that's given by this denoted by the symbol qs and the way uh, Shockley and Quasar calculated that, that uh, they assume this uh, step function for uh, for the absorption. So they assume that all the photons which have a frequency which corresponds to energy greater than the band gap, they'll get completely absorbed. And all the photons which have energy which is uh, less than the band gap, so this is the uh, energy and all the photons which have energy which is less than the band gap they will not get absorbed so this is an ideal step function uh profile for the absorption uh, function and then all those photons which are absorbed they are collected at the energy which is equal to equal to the band gap uh, of the and this is divided by the input power contained in the spectrum. So how are these uh, these QS and PS uh, calculated? So they are calculated using our friend the uh, Planck's law, which we derived uh, in one of the earlier videos. And this gives me the spectral irradiance or the power which is uh, contained in the spectrum as a function of as a function of uh, the wavelength or the frequency and uh, as a function of the temperature of my black body so which occurs over here so now the way i can calculate the number of photon absorbed is to essentially uh, take an integral of these uh, number of incoming photons at uh, each frequency and integrate it over uh, from the frequency which corresponds to the band gap of the cell all the way to infinity so if i perform this integral this gives me the total number of photons uh, that would be absorbed and how do i calculate the input power so the way i calculate the input power is i integrate this uh, power spectral density over uh, over the different uh, wavelengths so i've performed this integral now going all the way from wavelength of zero or frequency of zero to uh, frequency uh, of uh, infinity and this is something that we discussed previously that this is also uh, the approximately the stephen uh, boltzmann law and uh, <clears throat> Once you have these two values, you can essentially plug them into this equation and calculate the maximum efficiency. And it's not a very hard calculation to do, so you can write a few lines of uh, MATLAB uh, code to do so. And uh, if you uh, if you are uh, so inclined and uh, do uh, write up this uh, MATLAB code, so this is what you get. So this is uh, the ultimate efficiency, which is uh, as derived assuming that the cell is at uh, is at uh, zero. Kelvin and the sunlight is uh, incident on the cell from all directions and uh, the efficiency you get in this case is the maximum efficiency you get is approximately uh, 44 percent and it occurs uh, when you have a band gap of your absorbing material or the band gap of your semiconductor it's uh, approximately 1.08 eV so this efficiency is is much higher than uh, what uh, is the Shockley Quasar limit. So the Shockley Quasar limit is uh, in fact uh, around uh, thirty percent, as it was stated in the beginning of the paper. And this additional loss comes from uh, uh, the fact that the temperature of the cell is not zero Kelvin. It's in fact, uh, if you assume it to be three hundred Kelvin, then the cell would uh, act as a black body as well, and it will emit out uh, this uh, radiation of uh, its own and we need to take into that uh, we need to take that uh, into account uh, to derive this uh, Shockley coil element and uh, I'm out of time in uh, this video but I'll complete the derivation in the next uh, video so see you soon